And the Oscar goes to... Barbie Life in the Dream House. Barbie Life in the Dream House is the best piece of Barbie media ever made and I'm going to go into ridiculous detail to explain why. Hello doll fans and welcome back to Beauty Inside a Box. Today we are going to be looking back at my favourite piece of Barbie media, Barbie Life in the Dream House, which was a web series which came out between 2012 and 2015. Barbie Life in the Dream House has had such an amazing legacy, it gets used in countless memes these days. And I think it really epitomizes what Barbie really means. It's about fun and friendship and dolls. Barbie life in the dream house is iconic. I'm very passionate about this being the best piece of Barbie media. If you love Barbie, then please do subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram and TikTok. Barbie Life in the Dream House is a web series of computer animated shorts made by Arc Productions and Mattel. The series consists of 75 episodes across seven series and I watched every episode in preparation for this video and can I just say every single second was a pure delight. Arc Productions, the company that animated Barbie Life in the Dream House, is now called Jam Filled Entertainment and has had a ridiculous amount of name changes over its short history. It started off as Dan Kresh Productions from 1985 to 2000, then it was DKP Effects from 2000 to 2004, then it was DKP Studios from 2004 to 2006, then it was Stars Animation from 2006 to 2012, and then it was Arc Productions until 2012 to 2016, which is when it obviously made Barbie Life in the Dream House, and now it is Jam Filled Entertainment, which is a weird name. A very weird name. They also worked on the Bratz animated series, which makes a lot of sense because I really, really enjoyed the Bratz animated series, and both the Bratz animated series and Barbie Life in the Dream House have a very similar sense of humour, a sense of humour which I really enjoy, but it's interesting that it worked for these two, like, different teams. They are absolute enemies. Art Productions also worked on Barbie and her sisters in a ponytail, Barbie and her sisters in A Great Puppy Adventure, and Barbie Starlight Adventure, which can I just say, those Barbie movies in particular have really, really, really nice animation. I really like Barbie Starlight Adventure, although it's not very popular in the Barbie fandom for some reason. I thought that one was really cool, anyway. The series was originally released on YouTube and on the official Barbie website from January 10th, 2012 to November 27th, 2015 and some special episodes were aired on Nickelodeon. And now you can find loads of the episodes on Netflix, but they've been kind of like grouped together in weird bundles, so you can't really watch them in order. Uh, although, to be fair, the order doesn't really make any difference. Now, what I think sets Barbie Life in the Dream House apart from other pieces of Barbie media is its really unique style. The format of the show was very similar to a reality TV show, similar to like Keeping Up with the Kardashians or something, where characters would do their little private confidentials where they're just talking directly to the camera on a sofa, and the footage was made to look handheld, like it was a documentary or like a reality TV show, as I said. Another unique element of the show which I really loved was the fact that they didn't hide the fact that the characters were dolls. Other Barbie media kind of tries to imagine that Barbie's a real person, whereas in Barbie Life in the Dream House, they would have like visible joints and stiff plastic limbs, and they would even squeak when they moved. Yeah, we're exhausted! And oversized accessories like giant hairbrushes and stuff like that. It was like a world of dolls, but without humans to play with them. I think the live action Barbie movie is gonna go for a bit of a similar style when it comes to like the Barbie world. Making them look like real dolls actually hid a lot of the kind of animation flaws because they could look really plasticky. And also it was really funny. It meant there was lots of scope for meta humour, which as a doll collector I really appreciated. Another unique thing about Barbie Life in the Dream House that set it apart from other Barbie movies and TV shows is that it was actually funny. Like this show was actually funny. A lot of the Barbie media is great and nice and colourful, but it's normally not very funny. The jokes fall a little bit flat. 
And Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse is super self-referential as well. The show would often reference old pieces of Barbie history, which made the show great for older collectors as well as younger collectors. Another great thing about the show was the opening title sequence. The song was an absolute bop. Like, honestly, if a DJ played the Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse theme song in the club, I would go absolutely feral on the dance floor. I would lose my mind. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse is about, it's, you know, pretty self-explanatory. It's all set in and around Barbie's massive, plastic, fully technologically advanced, ridiculously glam and lavish dream house. It's like a mega mansion in Barbie's plastic version of Malibu. Now, before we can talk any more about the show, I want to introduce you to the cast and the characters. First of all, we have Barbie, who is played by Kate Higgins. Kate Higgins also voices Frankie Stein in Monster High. Fun fact. And Briar Beauty in the Ever After High webisodes. Barbie's characteristics are that she is, like, ridiculously, kind of hilariously perfect. Like, she can absolutely do no wrong. And you would think that Barbie being ridiculously perfect would get grating, but it actually doesn't. And I think we have Kate to thank for that. She just brings a really nice warmth to the character. And if you do get bored of Barbie's endless perfectness, um, the other characters in the show definitely offset that because they have some flaws. Next up, we have Ken, played by Sean Hankinson. Hankinson. Ken is a bit of a himbo who often becomes obsessed with projects. He's a bit of an inventor, like, quite a few episodes will revolve around him, like, building some ridiculous machine. But he's also absolutely obsessed with Barbie. I, to be honest, so is everyone in Barbie's version of Malibu. Everyone's obsessed with Barbie, but, you know, are they wrong? She's perfect. But the show has a lot of jokes about Ken and Barbie's relationship and how obsessed they are with each other, which I think is really, really sweet. And it's nice to watch a couple just love each other. You know, it's really uncomplicated. They never argue. They just fully love each other. Maybe a bit unrealistic, but nothing about this show is based in reality. And that's kind of what's so great about it. Next up, we have Teresa who is played by Katie Crown. Teresa is Barbie's slightly dim friend, is a nice way to put it. You know, every single kind of kids TV show has to have a dumb character. But Teresa's funny because she often takes things like far too literally. And also she's really loyal and imaginative and creative. There's a whole episode where she like creates her own runway show, her own collection of clothing, which is really cool. Before Life in the Dreamhouse, Teresa had also appeared in Barbie and the Diamond Castle, Barbie and a Fashion Fairy Tale, and since Life in the Dream House, Teresa has appeared in Barbie Spy Squad, Barbie Video Game Hero, Barbie Dream House Adventures, Barbie Princess Adventure, Barbie Big City Big Dreams, and Barbie It Takes Two. Next up, we have Nikki, who's played by Nikita Burais. Bur Burais? Sorry, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> And she's Barbie's slightly more serious, pessimistic friend. I do like the fact that she's not afraid to put Raquel in her place. Before Life in the Dream House, Nikki also appeared in Barbie in A Christmas Carol, Barbie in A Fashion Fairy Tale, and then after Life in the Dream House, she appeared in Barbie Dream House Adventures, Barbie Princess Adventure, Barbie Big City Big Dreams, and Barbie It Takes Two. Raquel. Raquel is played by... Haviland Stillwell. Haviland? Haviland Stillwell. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. She also voices characters in Monster High and Ever After High, same as Katie. Now, Raquel is Barbie's frenemy, the antagonist of the show, who's jealous of Barbie's perfection and all the attention she gets because of it, and is often trying to sabotage Barbie's projects to usurp her. But... Raquel is one of the absolute highlights of the show for me. She is always so funny, so animated, so over the top. And, you know, sometimes I kind of wish that she could succeed and thrive. Because even though she goes about it in the wrong way, she just wants attention. And can't we all relate to that? Don't we all want some attention sometimes? Barbie can't have all the attention. Comment down below if you're a Raquel stan like I am. 
I would love to see a Raquel spin-off show. Yeah, maybe Life in the Nightmare House. <laughs> Before Life in the Dream House, Raquel also appeared in The Barbie Diaries, this time with blonde hair, interestingly enough. And she appeared in Barbie in a Fashion Fairy Tale and Barbie in a Fairy Secret. Next up we have Ryan, who is played by Charlie Bowden. And Ryan is Raquel's twin brother, and he is in love with Barbie, and he's kind of like... Ken's antagonist. They're constantly in competition for Barbie's attention, but obviously Ken always wins because him and Barbie are absolute couple goals. Oh my goodness, I haven't said couple goals since like 2014 anyway. Now, Ryan kind of strangely disappears towards the end of the show's run. Like in the last two series, he's hardly in it. And I wonder if that has something to do with the voice actor's availability. Um, I'm not really sure why, but yeah, he's just not in it as much. But yeah, Raquel and Ryan give me a kind of Team Rocket energy. Next up, we have Skipper, who is played by Paula Rhodes. Skipper is like your typical teenager, you know? Like, she loves her technology, she's always on her phone, she loves listening to music. And she has her hair dyed black with a blue streak, I guess to kind of show that she's <laughs> not like other girls. Next up, we have Stacy, who is also played by Paula Rhodes. Stacy is Skipper's kid sister. I'm guessing she's like 12. And she loves sports. She's always skateboarding or climbing or whatever. <laughs> Could never be me. And she's also quite competitive. Next up we have Chelsea, who's played by Laura Giro. Giro? Giro? Sorry, I can't read these names. <laughs> Chelsea is Barbie's youngest sister. You may remember her as being called Kelly or Shelly in the 90s. And she's really cute, but she's not too grating, funnily enough. Normally I find, like, the youngest baby sibling character, like, kind of annoying and grating. But she's not annoying and grating, which is great. Great for her. And sometimes we get to see that Kelsey has a bit of a, like, secret dark side. Like, she loves gambling, she loves heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> this show is just wacky, what can I say? There are more characters, but they get introduced as the show goes on, so we'll talk about them as we go. There isn't any mention of Barbie's parents, which is a bit mysterious, a bit sus. Barbie, what did you do with your parents? Are they buried under the dream house? Like, what happened to them? They're literally never mentioned. But I have to say, I quite like the fact that it's just like Barbie and her sisters living together in this house. It feels very fun and youthful, you know what I mean? It's a bit of a kind of wish fulfillment fantasy for kids to kind of live without authority figures in their life. In a moment, I'm going to give you a full overview of every single episode of Barbie Life in the Dream House. But first of all, I thought, let's talk about the dolls, because I love dolls. Now, Barbie Life in the Dream House drew inspiration from loads of different Barbie lines that were out at the time, but there was also a specific Barbie Life in the Dream House doll line, and I am lucky enough to have one of the Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse dolls. This is such a great doll line, such an iconic doll line, and they're actually quite rare now. It's quite hard to find these dolls. The articulation on these dolls is really, really good. Like, they have bends in the elbows, bends in the wrists, bends in the knees, and also a bend at the waist, which I love. And also a lot of the dolls in this line had new face sculpts that were slightly more expressionate and kind of cartoony than some of the other face sculpts that Barbie was using at the time. She has incredible soft blonde hair, she has rooted eyelashes, and this outfit which just feels like very, very iconic, typical, traditional Barbie. You know what I mean? And she's got these cute high-heeled shoes on. I wish I had more of the dolls from this series to show you because I love them, but they're actually like really, really rare now for some reason. But in this image here, you can see all the different dolls that were available or became available as the series went on. They are absolutely stunning and, of course, wear outfits that appeared in the show. Here you can also see some examples of where they would dress the characters in outfits that were seen in other Barbie doll lines, like you can see Grace wearing this outfit from the Barbie style line. Can I just say, I used to love the Barbie style line. I wish they'd bring that line back. Um, and you can see Raquel wearing an outfit from the Barbie style line and Barbie. And you can also see Teresa 
wearing one of her outfits from the Fashionista line that was out at the time. There were also two dolls released of Barbie and Raquel, the two main characters, which could talk. Barbie! Off the hook! Off the hook! Introducing Talkin' Barbie and Talkin' Raquel. You can record your voice and they repeat it back. I need new shoes. Talkin' Barbie and Talkin' Raquel dolls each sold separately. There was also, of course, a dream house, which came out in, I think, around 2014. This was the only time this dream house sculpt was used, which is kind of interesting. And this dream house also is the only one that has the kind of shape of the dream house from the show, with that kind of iconic tower and the aquarium in the middle of the spiral staircase. You can also see on the TV and in the pictures that they've used images from the TV show. The Dream House the year before also had a lot of references to the show and in a lot of the promotional images also used the dolls from the show to advertise it. But this Dream House actually doesn't look like the one from the show, whereas the other one does. Here you can also see some of the other dolls which had the Barbie Life in the Dream House marketing printed on them and they were wearing some of the show's outfits. There was also little spin-off lines of dolls which were all based around specific episodes of the show. For example, this Barbie and her sister's Day of Fun doll and the Barbie the Amaze Chase dolls. <laughs> so as you can see, there were lots of different ways that Barbie used Life in the Dream House to create dolls. It is a new day, I'm wearing new clothes, but anyway, this is the point in the video where I'm going to talk about every single individual episode of Barbie Life in the Dream House, and I'm mostly going to focus on cute little Barbie easter eggs and Barbie lore, and obviously also my favourite moments and funny moments and stuff like that. Anyway, one thing which is kind of a blessing and a curse with the Barbie Life in the Dream House episodes is that they are only three minutes long. So, they're very easily digestible, and it made watching all 75 episodes a lot easier for me, but the plots are quite basic. <laughs> Not a lot happens in each episode, because they've only got three minutes to tell the story, and a lot of characters to pack in. Anyway, Series 1 was uploaded to YouTube and the Barbie official website in 2012. The first episode is truly just a iconic, iconic piece of Barbie media. The episode is called Closet Princess, and sadly no, Barbie doesn't come out in this episode. It's about Barbie, Teresa and Nikki getting lost in Barbie's ridiculously massive wardrobe, while Ken is waiting outside for a date with Barbie. This is the very first joke in the episode. What do you think, girls? Chic? Or so last week? Both. What? Last week was like a really good week for me. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious, as you can see. A notable moment, and one of the first times we get to see Barbie Life in the Dream House be self-referential, is where we see some of Barbie's fashions are packaged in like that classic Barbie packaging with the hook. Barbie also has a massive styling head in her wardrobe, which she can use to practice makeup looks on. The great part about Barbie Life in the Dream House is, like, the Dream House is basically like its own character. We also find out in the first episode that Barbie's address is 1959 Malibu Way, and 1959 is the year Barbie debuted. Episode 2, Season 1, is called Chelsea's Birthday. The sisters are introduced in this episode for the first time. Barbie has to distract Chelsea while the other sisters decorate her birthday cake. Stacy becomes a bit of a control freak. Ken tries to build Stacy a bike, but he accidentally builds a robot, which actually turns out to be exactly what Chelsea wanted. In this episode, we discover that the dream house is actually transformable, similar to a lot of Barbie playsets and dolls' houses. Like, when you click buttons, parts will, like, flip around and extend and reveal hidden accessories. I have the Barbie at Swan Princess Dream Castle, and there are so many little, like, hidden compartments. Very cool. Episode 3 is called Pet Peeves. Ken and Ryan have to pet sit for Barbie's pets, but they're not very good at it. This is the episode where Ryan is introduced, and I think also all the pets are introduced in this episode. The pets are hilariously dubbed with human voices in their, like, video confidentials. Please, I've coughed up hairballs that have more style. And another fun fact, they are voiced by the same person who voices Raquel. But she puts on, like, this really posh RP accent, which, again, is really funny. Episode 4 is called Rhapsody in Buttercream. 
Barbie has to make cupcakes to win a bet against Teresa. Hilarity ensues. I can't say this. Episode 5 is called Kentastic Hairtastic. This episode introduces Raquel for the first time and has the famous TikTok sound to the salon! It just needs a little <laughs> shaping. <laughs> to the salon! In one of the makeovers, Ken has plastic hair, which actually reminded me that at the time it was unusual for Ken to have plastic hair. In 2012, all the Ken dolls had like real rooted brushable hair. So it's just interesting to see how much times have changed. Like it was kind of like a joke in that episode for him to have plastic hair. And now all the Ken dolls have plastic hair. Also in this episode, Barbie sings, get your sparkle on <laughs> in the shower. Get your which is a song from Barbie and a Fashion Fairy Tale, so I love that little reference. Another fun joke is that Barbie's shower is like pumped by a little press pump, like a lot of Barbie playsets have. It's interesting how much of the Barbie universe is made for like giant human hands. Like, maybe Barbie's universe is actually a post-apocalyptic wasteland after a nuclear explosion which destroyed all the humans and left only the plastic Barbie products. Anyway, something interesting to think about. Episode 6 is called Party Foul. Raquel keeps changing the theme of her pool party so Barbie can't keep up. This is like an attempt to make Barbie be like wearing the wrong outfit at the party. So like, it'll be a costume party and then when Barbie gets into costume, she'll change it to a pool party. So Barbie's like never in the right outfit. But of course, Barbie triumphs because Barbie can make any outfit work and Raquel ends up making a fool out of herself as usual. I'm pretty sure this episode as well as the one that introduces the fact that Barbie's fashions are like transformable. Again, another kind of gimmick which a lot of the dolls have and I love that. Okay, so I accidentally forgot to talk about episode 7 which is called Day at the Beach. This episode is just about Raquel trying to outdo Barbie again. My favourite moment was when Ken mentioned them melting in the sun, obviously because they're made out of plastic. I thought that was quite funny. Oh Barbie, you missed a spot when one should have melt. And right at the end, there's a reference to Baywatch, which reminded me of the Baywatch Barbie. <laughs> Episode 8 is called Sticker It Up. Barbie redecorates the dream house using giant stickers. This is again another reference to Barbie products, like all the furniture is just like a sticker on the wall, but then like they'll pull out the furniture. It's kind of difficult to explain, but you get the idea. I just wanted to quickly point out this moment where Barbie is flipping through the channels on her new TV, and we hear this in the background. Who passes Dolls sold separately. This opens up a whole can of worms because obviously dolls are humans in this universe and are sentient. And obviously it says dolls sold separately. So what, you can buy humans in this universe? That's crazy. I know obviously it's just a throwaway joke, but I just have a lot of questions. Episode nine is called Oh How Campy and I love that title. Obviously, Barbie and her friends and her sisters go camping, and Barbie is camping wearing high heels, which I love. I miss when Barbie was over the top and glamorous all the time, like she did everything in high heels. Then were the days. Episode 10 is called Bad Hair Day. Barbie purposefully goes out looking bad to make Raquel feel better for always being like inferior to Barbie. But of course, Barbie starts like a fashion trend where everyone wants to have their hair looking messy and bad like Barbie has. But you know, the attempt was there. It was nice for a brief moment to see Raquel succeeding. I feel so sorry for Raquel sometimes. Like she tries so hard, but she can just never outdo the queen, Barbie. Episode 11 is called License to Drive. My driver's license! How is it that you don't have your license? Aren't you a race car driver? They have to assemble Barbie's new car and teach her how to drive. And I thought it was funny because the car included giant batteries, <laughs> like human-sized batteries. I just thought as well, the batteries reminded me of this. I have a feeling that Barbie may have been inspired by Toy Story because obviously Toy Story had been like super successful around this time and they had just brought out the third movie. And I wonder if Barbie Life in the Dream House like draws some inspiration from some of the kind of jokes that Toy Story had. And Barbie does make an appearance in Toy Story. Hmm. 
Now, in the episode License to Drive, they introduced this random piece of machinery called a schlawn poofer. Barbie, does this look like a schlawn poofer to you? Now, the schlawn poofer after this becomes a bit of a recurring gag. They'll bring it up randomly from time to time. Episode 12 is called I Want My BTV. They shoot a music video for Ryan. That's kind of all that happens. Hilarity ensues. Episode 13 is called Gifts, Goofs and Glory. The gang tries to get Barbie a birthday present, but she literally owns everything. <laughs> Opulence! She owns everything! And they also try and figure out her age, which at the time was like 52, I think? It was in episode 13 that I noticed that the toporary, toporary? Is that what it's called? that the hedge outside Barbie's dream house changes in accordance to what's going on in the episode. Little hidden Easter eggs. Ah, Barbie life in the dream house is so good. Episode 14 is called The Barbie Boutique. Barbie opens her own boutique and Raquel tries to open her own one to rival Barbie's. And once again, hilarity ensues. I really loved this episode. I think this may be one of my favorite episodes. I wrote in my notes here, I laughed at the I'm going to go spy on Barbie joke. I'll put a clip here. And what are you gonna do? I'll be formulating a business plan and conducting market research. You're gonna go spy on Barbie. I'm gonna go spy on Barbie. It was also in this episode that I noticed that all the background characters are just recolored versions of Raquel. <laughs> and that was the end of series one. There were also a couple of like mini short episodes. <laughs> yes, even shorter than three minutes. They were kind of boring. Like, they're just so short. So now we're going to talk about series two, which aired also in 2012, which makes me wonder if maybe they made all the episodes together and they just grouped them into series kind of randomly. Episode one is called The Reunion Show, and it's just the characters recapping what happened in the first season. Although I noticed there are a couple clips in the episode which are actually in later seasons. Yeah, the reunion episode is probably my least favourite because it also kind of had a couple spoilers because it was showing clips from later episodes. Episode 2, which is where the series starts properly, I would say, is called Closet Princess 2.0. And no, Barbie still does not come out in this episode. She literally gets trapped in her closet again and Funnily enough, this is a plot which is used quite a few times in the series run. In this particular episode, Ken has made artificial intelligence for the closet and it goes evil. Yeah, so the closet is evil and tries to trap Barbie. Hilarity ensues. Episode three is called Sisters Ahoy. Barbie and her sisters compete against others to complete a scavenger hunt on the beach. And this was a fun episode, and they even wore like kind of fun beach outfits, which I think were available in doll form at the time. Episode 4 is called The Shrinkinator. This episode contains even more character development for Ken as an inventor, which I just think is a great direction for him. It gives him like other character traits other than just being devoted to Barbie. Check it out! The Shrinkerator! But anyway, he makes a shrinking machine and accidentally shrinks Barbie and Raquel to the size of Barbie dolls. <laughs> it's very meta. In one moment, Barbie and Raquel are inside Chelsea's dollhouse, and we actually get a cameo from He-Man. It's nice to see that Chelsea plays with, like, dolls and also He-Man as well. Chelsea's kind of an icon. Episode 5 is called Plethora of Puppies. In this episode, Barbie's dog orders herself hundreds of puppies. She doesn't like give birth to the puppies. She orders them in a box. <laughs> the rest of the episode is about Barbie and her sisters trying to train the puppies. I'm not a massive fan of pets. I didn't grow up with any pets or anything, so this is definitely not my favourite episode. And this episode is probably the beginning of Mattel's obsession with giving every Barbie doll, like, a little plastic puppy. Yeah, this episode was clearly quite successful because there's been so much puppy-centric Barbie media and dolls since this episode. Anyway, episode six is called Closet Close Out. Yet another episode about Barbie's closet, but I'm definitely not complaining. In this episode, Barbie's closet is too full, so they have to throw out some of Barbie's clothes. Ken has a great line, which I think really exemplifies the show's campy, self-referential humour. Exactly what I was afraid of. The energy generated by the sheer fabulousness of these clothes could tear a hole in the space-time continuum. That's a great line. That's a great line. 
That should be a TikTok sound. I think I'm gonna make that into a TikTok sound. In one of the best moments of this episode, Barbie has a fashion show where she shows off some of her most iconic looks. Like she wears her original swimsuit, the superstar Barbie outfit, and she wears the western Barbie outfit, and she even winks in it, I think. Iconic. Iconic. This episode actually ends with Barbie putting all her old outfits in a massive cardboard box and selling them on eBay. <laughs> well, it's the Barbie eBay equivalent. <sighs> Bad news, guys. The buyer wanted everything in its original packaging. Whoops. Episode 7 is called Accidentally on Poipus. All these puns, oh my goodness, every episode has a pun in it. Anyway, in this episode, Chelsea buys some pet dolphins to put in an aquarium which Ken built in the middle of the dream house. The dolphins were another great opportunity for doll tie-in products. There have been so many Barbie products with dolphins involved since this episode. Barbie basically invented dolphins and puppies. Episode 8 and episode 9 are a two-part episode, which happens quite a few times in the series run. These episodes are called Gone Glitter Gone Part 1 and 2. The episodes are all about a glitter shortage in Malibu. And I just want to take this opportunity to once again point out how hilarious and campy is this show. Chelsea happens to be the last person in Malibu of any glitter, and she starts acting like a mafia boss, and there are loads of references to The Godfather which are absolutely hilarious. They actually do the scene with the horse head. And I want to take this moment to mention that Barbie references famous films a lot in this show. You can see a side-by-side -side comparison of some of these cinematic references in this amazing montage, which was made by Axel Malibu on Instagram. ...about a dolphin. He's got like lifeless eyes, black, black eyes, eye. like a doll's eye. eyes, and then those black eyes roll over white. Ah! I'm melting! I'm melting! Life's like, like a, like box, a of box of chocolates. chocolates. No. Make me an make offer I can't again. refuse. At the end of the double episode, they actually strike glitter like it's oil. <laughs> so that was the end of series two. Now we're going to move on to series three, which came out in 2013. Episode one is called Playing Heart to Get. And it's a Valentine's episode where Ryan is trying to find the perfect gift for Barbie to outshine Ken. Hilarity ensues. Episode two is called Catty on the Catwalk. Raquel, who, by the way, is fast becoming my favourite character in this show, every moment she's on screen is absolutely hilarious. Anyway, Raquel is trying to steal Barbie's secrets. I feel sorry for Raquel in this episode. They have a fashion show, and of course Raquel completely flops. And Barbie comes out on top, looking amazing and fabulous as always. It is a hilarious episode, but poor Raquel! Justice for Raquel! Episode 3 is called Help Wanted. In this episode, Skipper comes to work at Barbie's boutique. Skipper creates this invention called the Glittermifier, but it reminded me of the Glitterizer from Barbie in a Fashion Fairy Tale, and I wonder if that was intentional. Episode 4 is called Spooky Sleepover. Barbie, Raquel, Teresa, and Nikki have a sleepover, and Ryan is trying to scare Barbie, so she jumps into his arms. But Ryan ends up getting scared himself and jumps into Ken's arms? which started my own headcanon where Ryan and Ken go from like enemies to lovers and they've got this whole subtextual gay romance going on the whole time. Sorry Barbie. Episode 5 is called A Smidge of Midge. A brilliant episode which reintroduces Midge to the Barbie line after having not seen her since like the mid noughties. Midge was first introduced in 1963. She actually turns 60 years old this year. She was later on married to a guy called Alan in a line of dolls which came out in 1991. And they later had two kids together in the early noughties. The line was called Happy Families and featured a pregnant Midge doll which stirred up a lot of controversy. After the controversy, Midge wasn't seen much in the Barbie line. She just disappeared. And unsurprisingly, Midge's kids and husband are not mentioned at all in Barbie Life in the Dream House. Anyway, in the episode, when Midge first arrives, she's in black and white, and a laugh track can be heard, like she's come straight out of a 60s sitcom. Another brilliant example of Life in the Dream House catering to older fans as well as younger fans. 
There's a joke in this episode about modern Barbie dolls being more articulated than the older dolls like Midge. <gasps> You're fully articulated? I can only do this. Ah! And I thought this joke hadn't aged very well because nowadays Barbies have like no articulation and actually vintage dolls tend to have better articulation than modern Barbies because at least they can like bend at the knees and stuff. But, oh well. If they remade this episode today, they could make a joke about modern Barbies being cheap and stiff with painted on clothes. <laughs> Obviously, Mattel would never do that. At the end of the episode, Midge has a modern makeover and becomes a recurring character in the show and in the Barbie line. On the Barbie YouTube channel, they actually remade a couple of episodes using dolls, like actual real-life dolls, and the Smidge of Midge episode is one of the episodes which got remade. Definitely something worth checking out. Episode 6 is called Occupational Hazard. Ken tries to get a job, but he keeps messing it up because he's distracted by wanting to look after Barbie. In this episode, we find out that Barbie's favourite movie is called Sad and Romantic, the sequel. <laughs> episode 7 is called Oh, How Campy 2. Barbie and her sisters are camping in the camper van, but Stacy has to camp outside because she's trying to get some kind of, like, wilderness explorer badge. And this episode kind of sets up the bear as a recurring character. There's like a plastic bear. The bear was also in the first Oh How Campy episode, and now the bear's back, and the bear like helps Stacy get her badge. And basically every time they get in the camper after that, you can see the bear. The bear's like hanging out in the camper. <laughs> Episode 8 is called Let's Make a Doll. Barbie's friends play a quiz game to see who knows Barbie the best. Schlon Poofa! There's loads of like little fun trivia moments for Barbie fans in this episode. The final question is when did Barbie get a belly button? Ken says the answer is 13 years ago, which I guess would mean the answer was around 2001. The first time I ever got a Barbie with a belly button was when I got the Rain or Shine Barbie doll. I loved that doll. And now we are on to series 4, which was also released in 2013. Episode 1 is called Endless Summer. Another episode which expands the Barbie lore even more and reintroduces an old character. Summer was first introduced in 2004 with the Cali Girl line of dolls. Summer is super sporty and high energy and competitive and Barbie and her friends start to find her a little bit exhausting. The episode ends with Barbie and Summer having a Vogue off. Cage match! Cage! Ready for an old school pose down? Oh, you think you can handle this? Which is basically the most campy and flamboyant thing I've ever seen. And we stan. We stan. Episode 2 is called Sour Loser. Chelsea starts her own lemonade stand. In the beginning of the episode, Raquel accidentally calls Chelsea Kelly. Kelly, right? It's Chelsea. Which is obviously another old school reference to when Chelsea used to be called Kelly in the Barbie line. I absolutely love how well researched the writers were for this show. They did their homework. Also, I love episodes when we get kind of like interesting combinations of characters, like Chelsea and Raquel don't interact that much. Episode 3 is called Another Day at the Beach. This episode opens with a reference to another kind of iconic vintage Mattel toy. Basically, the Rock'em Sock'em robots are built in the sand, like sandcastles on the beach. In this episode, Barbie tries to get Midge and Summer to get along, but they are like polar opposites. There are so many hilarious jokes. This is definitely one of my favourite episodes. Episode 4 is called Happy Bath Day to You. This episode is about Barbie trying to give her pets a bath, but they keep trying to avoid it. And it actually ends with a hilarious reference to Thelma and Louise. <laughs> definitely a reference which will go over the heads of any children watching. <laughs> episode 5 is called Cringing in the Rain. The dolls are stuck inside because it's a rainy day. It starts off as kind of like your classic bottle episode, except in the end they learn to enjoy the rain and they all go out in these really cool, iconic, colour-coordinated rain outfits. Where were the dolls, Mattel? Where were the dolls? Episode 6 is called The Ken Den and I low-key kind of hate this episode. Basically, Ken builds a man cave in one of the dressing rooms at Barbie's boutique so that the boys have something to do while the girls are shopping. It plays into loads of really harmful gender stereotypes, just as you'd expect from an episode like this. 
All the other male extras in this episode are just recolored Kens, I noticed as well. The silver lining of this episode is that Barbie actually breaks a couple gender stereotypes because she quite enjoys the man cave, but overall, you know, there are lots of gender stereotypes at play here. Episode 7 is called Pimp My Ride. Barbie and her sisters make over Ken's car for their anniversary. Hilarity ensues. Golden schlond poofer. Episode 8 is called Mall Mayhem. In this episode, the girls go to the mall and there's like loads of different random stuff happens. It's actually a really funny episode, but it's kind of hard to explain because there's just loads going on. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Episode 9 is called The Upgradening. Ken upgrades Barbie's wardrobe by adding a clothing vending machine, which is actually a real product you could buy in real life. And here it is. <laughs> now we are on to series five, which came out also in 2013. And this season is like suspiciously short. There's only five episodes. So that's interesting. I think this also plays into my theory that they made all the episodes together, or maybe in like two or three bunches, and then just kind of like randomly separated them into series. Anyway, episode one is called Dr. Barbie. In this episode, Chelsea gets plastic pox. Did you try using a wet cloth? Uh-huh. Episode two is called Stuck With You. During a games night, Barbie and Ryan get stuck in her lift. There's a great moment when Midge is trying to play charades, but she's really struggling because she doesn't have full articulation. Her hands are just like this. Episode three is called The Only Way to Fly. In this episode, Barbie and her sisters build a plane. They have to use a massive instruction manual because there is some assembly required. And all the buttons on the plane are just like a big sticker. I love this. Again, references to real life Barbie products. Okay, episodes four and five in this series are extra long episodes, clocking in at a whopping 11 and a half minutes. They originally aired as part of a special event on Nickelodeon before being uploaded to the Barbie YouTube channel. Anyway, episode four is called Trapped in the Dream House. There's that familiar plot once again. <laughs> Teresa is putting on a fashion show and Raquel tries to sabotage it by turning Barbie's robot dream house evil again. This episode involves lots of Indiana Jones references. As they're trying to escape the dream house, it's kind of like the Temple of Doom. <laughs> There's even a moment where Barbie is running away from a massive rolling Barbie head that's fallen off of her massive styling head. And I noticed that some of the clothes in the fashion show at the end actually featured in the Fashionista line the year this episode came out. <laughs> episode 5 is called Perth Pool Party, and I found this one kind of boring. Barbie has a pool party and everyone just kind of gets up to their usual hijinks. Okay, next we are at season six, which came out in 2014. We have episodes one and two, which are a two-part episode, which is called Style Super Squad. Barbie and her friends form a team dedicated to solving fashion emergencies. It's basically a much more funny, campy version of the Barbie Spy Squad film, which came out a couple years later. I'm not a big fan of that Barbie movie. Their outfits in this episode are giving Totally Spies, which I love. In the subplot, Raquel makes a celebrity fragrance, which she's called Narcissism. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that. Raquel is comic genius. Episode 3 is called Little Bad Dress. Teresa wears one of Raquel's dresses and it makes her evil, which kind of makes me wonder if Raquel changed clothes with, like, Barbie, would she not be evil anymore? Is it the clothes that are making Raquel evil as well? Who knows? Episode 4 is called Going to the Dogs. All the pets have a surfing contest and we get introduced to Raquel's dog for the first time, who is called Broomhilda, I think, if I'm remembering that correctly. And she can only speak in German. <laughs> uh, iconic. Episode 5 is called Dream a Little Dream House. Everyone works together to make a playhouse for Chelsea. But the playhouse they make looks exactly like the original Barbie Dreamhouse. 
It's even made out of cardboard, similar to the original dream house. Chelsea doesn't like the dream house they make, she's obviously not a fan of vintage Barbie. So she makes her own dream house, which is hidden behind a bush. I found it interesting because Chelsea's dream house in the episode is just like a tiny version of the actual dream house, whereas the Chelsea Playhouse playset, which was released around that time, looked completely different. So that was some bad synergy right there, but you know, it is what it is. And again, I love how all of Chelsea's friends in this episode are just recolored versions of Chelsea. I'm kind of starting to love spotting the cheap animation. <laughs> episode six is called Mayor of Malibu. Chelsea and Raquel run for Mayor of Malibu and hilarity ensues. Episode 7 is called Bizarro Barbie. Fun fact about this episode, it is the highest rated episode on IMDb, with a whopping 9.2 stars, which I'm pretty sure is more than any Barbie movie that's ever been made. Funnily enough, I wouldn't put this episode as one of my favourites. It's funny, don't get me wrong, it's funny, but it's definitely not my favourite. In this episode, Raquel goes to a parallel dimension where Barbie is called Blobby. Blobby is like a bland, boring version of Barbie. Obviously, in this episode, Raquel finally usurps Barbie, but then she gets bored of Blarby and goes back to the original version. I also noticed that there are a lot of parallels between this episode and the Barbie Boutique episode. Episode 8 is called Doll v Dessert. Barbie and Teresa go up against Raquel and Ryan in a British Bake Off style baking contest, and Raquel actually wins! Raquel wins the contest! Although Raquel still manages to embarrass herself at the end of the episode, I'm just so glad to finally see Raquel succeed. It's been such a long time in the making, I'm, I'm so proud of her. Series 6, episode 8. Well done, Raquel. Episode 9 is called Going Viral, and fun fact about this episode, this episode is the lowest rated episode on IMDb, with only 5.2 stars. And I can kind of see why. It's very much giving Emoji Movie vibes. It's all about Raquel trying to create a viral video by imitating famous cat memes. A premise which I'm sure even felt outdated and pandering even in 2014. But it still wasn't that awful. It still was a pretty good episode. Any episode with Raquel in is sure to be hilarious and iconic. And watching Raquel trying to imitate a cat <laughs> was pretty funny. Okay, episode 10 is called Girls Day Out. Barbie takes her horse on a day out, and all the other pets get jealous. Hilarity ensues. This is quite a funny episode. It was funny watching Barbie, like, having conversations with her horse. <laughs> okay, I forgot to talk about episode 11, but it wasn't a particularly interesting one. It's called Business is Barking, and it's basically about Chelsea opening a pet salon. I feel like there's been a lot of pet-centric episodes recently. Anyway. Episode 12 is called When the Cat's Away. Chelsea gets lost in the closet and Barbie and Ken have to go on a mission to try and find her. I feel like Barbie or one of Barbie's friends getting lost in the closet has happened so many times now that I'm getting kind of exhausted by it. And also this is one of the worst versions of that plot, if you know what I mean. Episode 13 and 14 are another two-part episode called Ice Ice Barbie. The dolls are complaining about never having seen snow in Malibu, so Ken makes a snow machine and they all frolic in the snow. This episode hasn't aged very well because I'm pretty sure that quite recently it snowed in Malibu. All the gang's plastic like seizes up in this episode because it's so cold, so they have to put the snow machine in a giant hot tub filled with hot chocolate. This show is so random, I literally never thought I would say that sentence ever in my life. Episode 15 is called The Amaze Chase, and this was another extra long episode, clocking in at a massive 23 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be a parody of a show called The Amazing Race, but I've actually never seen that show. Barbie and her friends split up into teams and have to travel across the country to complete challenges, whilst one by one getting eliminated. Skipper joins Raquel's team because Barbie read her diary. <gasps> Barbie! That's unlike you. But then she rejoins Barbie's team at the end when she realises that Barbie read her diary by accident. The race, of course, comes down to Barbie against Raquel. 
Just when it looks like Raquel's gonna win, she drains all the power in her car using a hair dryer to fix her hair, and Barbie wins at the last minute. <laughs> poor Raquel, poor Raquel. At the end of this episode, Raquel looks so defeated and heartbroken, it's actually kind of hard to watch. <laughs> Okay, episode 16 is called New Girl in Town. I absolutely love this episode because it introduces Grace into the main Barbie line. Grace has crossed over from a spin-off Barbie line called So In Style. Barbie makes friends with her at the Malibu Mall and she even describes Grace as being So In Style, which is of course a reference to the original line. She is so in style. I wonder if she already has a BFF. The only bittersweet thing about this episode is it kind of signified the end of the So In Style line because Grace was just being like integrated into the main line, which was a shame because that was a great line. Episode 17 is called Malibu's Imperial Emporium. Okay, it's actually Empirical Emporium. Wow, don't I look stupid. And in this episode, Grace decides to open a science shop in the mall. At first, it isn't very popular but Grace convinces everyone how fun science can be. And I love this because it gives Grace some character development as well. She's obviously into science, she's very intellectual, and we love that for her. Girls in STEM subjects, woo! Okay, now let's talk about season seven, the final season of this iconic show. First up, episode one is called Red Carpet Caper. Barbie is going to a film premiere of a film which she, of course, stars in, which Raquel, of course, tries to sabotage. I feel like we've done Raquel trying to sabotage Barbie plotlines a thousand times, but again, it's fine. Raquel, like, sets all these traps for Barbie on the red carpet, but then when Barbie thanks her for being such a good friend, Raquel feels guilty and then springs all the traps on herself instead to save Barbie. And can I just say, Raquel gets such a full, complete character arc throughout the course of this show. I feel like she really redeems herself by the end. Episode two is called Mission Impossible. Paw, like, like an animal has a paw. Impossible. Anyway. Okay, I don't love the pet-centric episodes, but this one is actually quite funny. Basically, the pets sneak out of the house while Barbie and Ken are on a date, but they have to kind of try and avoid Barbie and Ken so that they don't get caught leaving the house. The film poster in this establishing shot kind of looks like a Barbie movie, like maybe Princess and the Pauper. This episode actually has the Wilhelm scream in it, if you know, you know. Episode three is called The Telethon. This episode is about Barbie and Chelsea running a telethon to raise money for pets that can't read. How hilarious and campy and iconic. Raquel obviously tries to steal the show but fails miserably again. In this episode, Midge does a rap, <laughs> which is pretty iconic, I won't lie. And Nikki sings opera, also iconic. You know, these dolls are just so multi-talented. <laughs> episode four is called Don't Bet On It. This episode is pretty hilarious, although I've said that for nearly every episode. Barbie and her sisters have a bet that they can't give up things that they love for a whole day. Barbie has to give up talking to Ken, Skipper has to give up technology, and Stacy has to give up sports, and Chelsea has to give up soft toys. I thought it was so cute that Barbie has to give up talking to Ken, like they literally can't even go a day without talking to each other. They are just such a cute couple, and they're so wholesome and in love with each other, and it's just adorable. Other pieces of Barbie media will depict Barbie and Ken as just friends, which I always find quite frustrating, um, and I'm glad that Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse commits to them being boyfriend and girlfriend. Like, there's nothing wrong with them just being in love with each other, and I think it's really cute. We get another cameo from He-Man in this episode as well. We see him in Chelsea's room in and amongst all her soft toys. Episode five is called Dissin Cousins. Ken's distant cousin comes from out of town and is constantly showing up Ken. Ken starts to feel self-conscious, but Barbie reassures Ken that he is the best boyfriend ever. And that scene is so romantic. It's like more romantic than Titanic and Romeo and Juliet combined. It's beautiful. Now you listen to me, Ken Carson. Ben may be good at some things, but you're the best boyfriend in the world. Really? Of course. Plus, Ben doesn't like sherbet, and that's a deal breaker for me. <laughs> <laughs>
not gonna lie, I kind of wish they'd kissed here, but it's still a very cute scene. Episode six is called Alone in the Dream House. Barbie and her sisters are going to the beach, but they accidentally leave Chelsea behind. <laughs> And the episode obviously becomes a spoof of Home Alone. Fun fact about this episode is you can actually hear that Skipper is listening to the Fifth Harmony song, Me and My Girls, which was a special Barbie promotional release from Fifth Harmony. This is the first time we hear anyone listening to that song in an episode, but later on there is a whole episode about Fifth Harmony. Episode 7 is called Mooning Over You. Okay, so in this episode Barbie and Ken are in space mining for space sequins when Ken accidentally breaks free of his tether and is like drifting off into space. Which, after watching the film Gravity, is actually a bit of a like a rational fear of mine, like getting stuck drifting out into space. Luckily, Barbie saves him. And this episode was surprisingly epic in scope. You know, most of the episodes of Life in the Dream House are set in and around the Dream House, whereas this one's in space. Episode eight is called Sidewalk Showdown. Skipper is going to see her favorite singer, Cody Liam Zane. <laughs> Cody Liam Zane is obviously a bit of a parody of One Direction, who were really big at the time. Although the actual character, Cody Liam Zane, looks very similar to Justin Bieber. So he's kind of like an amalgamation of all of the little boy pop icons of the time. Episode 9 is called Sisters Day of Fun, and this was another special event episode which was shown on Nickelodeon, and it is like the longest episode there is. It's like 23 minutes long or something. This episode is also the second highest rated episode on IMDb, with 8.6 stars. This episode starts with a cameo from Fifth Harmony in doll form. Funnily enough, Barbie actually did release dolls of Fifth Harmony, and these dolls are really, really rare now. They're really hard to find online, and maybe that's just in the UK, but they're really hard to find online. And in this episode, Sisters Fun Day, Fifth Harmony are actually wearing the outfits their dolls wear. I found this episode quite funny to watch in hindsight because they depict Fifth Harmony as being like best 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 friends, but nowadays we know that Fifth Harmony never really got on, and I think a lot of them don't really like each other anymore, but anyway, it is what it is. Basically in this episode Barbie is meant to be hanging out with her sisters, but she keeps having to leave to help Fifth Harmony direct their new music video. And even though I did really enjoy this episode, it did feel very long. Maybe it's because I'm used to these episodes only being like three minutes, but I kept kind of looking at my watch like, is this still going? Um, but yeah, maybe that's just because I'm not used to this length. Anyway, in the end of the episode, the sisters get annoyed that Barbie keeps leaving, but they forgive her, and then they all get given tickets to the Fifth Harmony concert. And there's this subplot about these things called flip quakes, which is where like big turntables will flip over, kind of similar to how the dream house transforms. It's so random. And basically Barbie and her sisters stop the flip quakes by putting a giant battery into the back of a mountain. It sounds ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but it's hilarious. And the special Barbie Fifth Harmony song, Me and My Girls, gets played literally about a thousand times in this episode. There are four more episodes in this season, but Sisters Fun Day would have worked so much better as the final episode. It's really like epic and conclusive and it ends with a big dance party while they're all at the Fifth Harmony concert. I wonder if they originally intended it to be the final episode. But yeah, my head canon is that Sisters Fun Day is the final episode. They even made special dolls for the episode Sisters Fun Day, and I found online a music video for the Fifth Harmony song that appears in the episode, and the girls in real life are wearing the outfits the dolls wear. Okay, Sisters Fun Day was an iconic, iconic episode, but we still have four more episodes to talk about, and the next three episodes, episode 10, 11, and 12, are actually a three-part episode called Send In The Clones. It's three parts long, so it's basically like nine minutes altogether. And Barbie is feeling overworked because of her ridiculous number of jobs, so Ken builds a machine that can create Barbie clones. Of course, one of the Barbie clones becomes evil somehow, and starts messing everything up, and everyone thinks it's actually Barbie doing all this horrible stuff. At the end, Barbie has to prove that she is the true original Barbie, and it is quite a fun episode, I did really enjoy it. And now, last but not least, episode 13, the actual final episode of Barbie Life in the Dream House. This episode is called The Fantastic-est? The Fantastic-est? The Fantastic-est? 
I literally can't even say this word. The fantastic journey, basically. Barbie and Ken shrink down using Ken's shrink ray and travel inside Barbie's dog to retrieve a present that it swallowed. Yeah, it's kind of a weird way to end the series on an episode like this. But I guess these episodes don't really have a chronological order. You can kind of watch them in any order. Or maybe they weren't sure if they were going to make more episodes. Maybe originally they planned to make more episodes that were cancelled. Okay, so there we have it. I spoke about every single episode of Barbie at Life in the Dreamhouse. Episodes and clips from the show would be re-released on Barbie's YouTube channel after they finished making the show, and obviously they released all the episodes on Netflix, but in kind of weird bundles. As I mentioned before, they also remade a couple episodes using actual dolls. You can find all of those online, they are really cool, but I think the original animation is actually better. Why do I think the show ended? I think it ended for several reasons. I think the main reason is because every so often, normally every three to five years, Barbie will revamp her image anyway to try and stay current. And that normally includes changing the animation that's used in the films, maybe changing the voice actress that voices Barbie, changing the dolls. And in around 2014, 2015, when this show was ending, Barbie was at an all-time low. Sales were not looking good. So in 2016, Barbie had one of its biggest, most highly publicized rebrandings, where they expanded the line to include loads of different body types, loads more diversity, and even though all of that change was incredibly positive, they also took away quite a lot of the glamour and campiness that Barbie used to be known for to focus more on making Barbie more relatable, I guess. And I just think the show Life in the Dream House didn't really fit with Barbie's aesthetic anymore or fit with the direction they were taking the brand in. So I think that's why the show was ended. And also another reason why the show probably ended is because most kids' shows don't have more than like 60 episodes because kids are quite happy to re-watch media but I really miss the campy, glamorous, over-the-top, flamboyant, ostentatious style and humour of Barbie Life in the Dream House and honestly I think that's why it is one of the best pieces of Barbie media and I think this Barbie is still how people remember Barbie, you know, pink dress, long blonde hair, high heels. Ugh, I miss when every single Barbie doll used to have high heels. There was a sort of spiritual successor to Barbie Life in the Dream House called Barbie Dream House Adventures. If you really want me to, I will watch all of that series and talk about that one as well. I have seen a couple episodes and it is in no way as good as Barbie Life in the Dream House. The point of a show like Barbie Life in the Dream House or any kind of doll tie-in webisodes is to just give kids a kind of jumping off point to imagine their own stories and imagine their own games. I also love the characters of this show, especially Raquel, she's an icon, and of course Barbie and Ken, I mean they're all just great. And also re-watching this show was really nostalgic to me, I really enjoyed doing it and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. So, there we go, doll fans. I feel like I've covered every single aspect of the amazing show, which is Barbie Life in the Dream House, and laid out my argument pretty well for why this is the best piece of Barbie media. Or, you know what, maybe even the best piece of media, full stop. <laughs> Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it, please give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok and watch some more of my videos. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me talk about next time. And I will see you real soon, doll fans. Bye! <laughs>